If you've been following AI trends, chances are you've heard about QLearn method of fine tuning, but if you're still wondering what makes it so special or unique, I will take you through a hands-on tutorial and you will see for yourself how you can save money on computation and so efficiently train a model with limited GPU locally and use it for your personal and business projects. Here's the roadmap. First, I will review the parameter efficient fine tuning or PEF and lowering adaptation or LoRa method that I've explained in detail in my previous tutorials. Then we begin the hands-on session. First, by installing the dependencies and specifying the base model to fine tune. Then by following a three-step process of specifying the quantization method, model configuration and tokenization, as well as creating the LoRa adapters or LoRa. This will be the core of the fine tuning process with QLoRa. After that, we will load our selected data set and format it so we can parse the data, tokenize it, and split it into training and evaluation data sets for fine tuning. The final stage is defining the training arguments and fine tuning the model. These two stages are essentially all you need to complete the fine tuning, but I will also include two bonus steps. One is to save the fine tuned model and model tensors locally, and the second is to test this newly updated model on unseen data to examine its performance and accuracy. So if you have to grab your coffee or pause the video to first check out parts one and two of the fine tuning tutorial series, it's time to do so. Fine tuning a large language model is basically providing a generative model with a specific type of data for a specific task and updating that model to get a new model which is more tuned or fine tuned towards performing that specific task better. Full fine-tuning large language models can be computationally expensive and demanding on memory because of the optimization process and calculating gradients. Here is where techniques such as LoRa or LoRaN adaptation can be such a game changer, especially because it creates very lightweight small adapters based on a specific data set. Basically, we only update the weights of the parameters in these smaller adapters, which are usually the last layer or last few layers of the neural network, instead of updating all weights in full fine tuning. As you can already guess, this approach becomes really light on GPU and computation. To take this a step further, we have QLoRa or quantized LoRaN adaptation, which is a technique for fine-tuning LLMs even more efficiently by compressing the models through quantization. QLoRa is basically LoRa with quantized linear layers in the base model. The quantization process converts the weights and activations within a language model from high precision values to lower precision ones by changing the data type. It significantly reduces the size of the LLM, which in turn reduces the amount of memory needed to load and process the model. But by doing so, it also reduces the amount of information that may slightly affect the precision of the model's output. Enough of theory and concepts, let's jump into the hands-on fine-tuning. The first step is installing the dependencies. Because I was doing other tasks in this session, I have imported more libraries, but you don't need all of these. I've already talked about most of these libraries. The new one here is the bits and bytes library, which is responsible for the entire quantization process down the line. What it does is basically quantizing the weights to lower precision values, for example, forward precision, to make the training process faster and use less VRAM. For the rest of the libraries, I will leave a link to their exact versions that work better together. I'm also importing PEFT and LoRa configuration modules, as well as training methods and the data collector from the Transformers library. The second step is to specify the base model. Here I'm using a lightweight Quen 2.5 model for faster training, but feel free to choose any other model. The performances of the Quen 2.5 model series have significantly improved, especially for instruction following and generating long text that are essential for this tutorial, because I'm going to use a question-answer dataset as you will see in a bit. Here are more details about this half a billion parameter model, including the number of parameters and layers. Moving on to the third step, which is the most important part of the QLoRa method. We will specify the quantization process with bits and bytes configuration. The most efficient way to quantize the model is using the 4-bit along with the BF16 data type. Double or nested quantization is where the quantization constants from the first quantization are quantized again to save an additional 0.4 bits per parameter. 
So basically, we use double quantization to save extra memory, 16-bit data type for faster training, and NF4 or normalized float 4 for higher precision. Now, step 4 is our initial model configuration and tokenization. For this, I'm using AutoModel for causal LM for causal language modeling or to generate text by predicting the next word in a sequence. And for tokenization, I'm using auto tokenizer from Transformers. I'm setting the device map to auto so it automatically fills all available space first on the GPU, then the CPU if needed. Trust remote code is set to true for the models that you have to pull from the Hugging Face repository of the models. As far as I know, Quen models are already included in the Transformers library, so I shouldn't need this, but when I check their suggested practices, they want you to set it to true. The tokenization process is very straightforward. Just as in the previous fine tuning sessions, we define a tokenizer to pass the base model and use padding on a token that will represent the end of a sentence or sequence. The fifth step is also the new one in this series. Here we're going to use prepare model for KB training on the model to prepare the embedding layer for gradient updating. By printing the model, we not only get to see the overall structure or architecture of our model, but we can also specify the self-attention linear layers from the embedding. Basically, these will be the target modules to update when creating LoRa or the adapters in the next step. Here in step 6, we will configure the adapter so we can create a PEFT model. R is the rank of the update matrices, where a lower rank results in smaller update matrices with fewer trainable parameters. LoRa alpha is the scaling factor for the weight matrices. While doing research on LoRa alpha, I found out that the weight matrix is scaled by LoRa alpha to the rank of LoRa where a higher alpha value assigns more weight to the LoRa activations. I've also seen some reporting that a value of 32 is the best balance for the training and validation loss without any added time during the computation. Dropout is basically the dropout probability of the adapter layers where we drop out or remove some of the neurons to make the model less dependent of those neurons. This process helps prevent overfitting the training dataset. And these module names, do you remember? For the step 7, we want to load a local dataset or one from the Hugging Face repository of datasets, which is what I'm choosing here, with this general knowledge dataset of questions and answers on these topics. I chose this dataset as it has a very straightforward structure of question text and answer text, so I have to do the minimum formatting when feeding it to the model. I'm printing the first five rows and everything looks fine. But before fine-tuning the model with this data set, I just wanted to test the model's present performance, meaning without fine-tuning. So here, after defining a prompt or question, I encode it, which means using the same tokenizer that I defined earlier to tokenize the question and return the tensor representation of it. Then I call the generate method of text generation, which takes in the tokenized question as the input and applies a tension mask to mask out the padded tokens, which we don't want to consider or simply put, we don't want the model to pay attention to. Once the encoding part is completed, we can use the same tokenizer to decode the output or the answer to that question. I gave it an unseen question, which is generally hard for AI models to get right, and that is why AI image generators cannot produce human hands and fingers. Feel free to pause the video and read the model's answer, but the gist is that hands and fingers have complex movements that cannot be replicated. While the answer is partially true, I was looking for a better explanation. Let's see if the fine-tuned model can perform better on unseen data. For that, in step 8, we have to format the data so it can automatically feed the questions and their corresponding answers as inputs to the model. So the first thing we do after defining our Pandas dataset is to format the text as a pair of questions and answers, tokenize each set using the same tokenizer we used before, and finally split these sets into training and evaluation datasets for batch processing. Since the aim of this tutorial is to show the overall process to speed up the training, I'm selecting only 500 question answer sets for each of the training and evaluation datasets. But for any significant improvement, you need to choose several thousand or possibly the entire dataset. 
Here you can see the mapping for batch processing is completed. So we can safely move on to the final step to specify some training arguments before training. There are two additional model specifications that I'm setting here. One is to turn off caching and the second is to use a data collator to create batches of train and evaluation data and pad them to the maximum length of the batch to make them the same length. I'm also setting the mask language modeling at this stage to false, so the labels are the same as the inputs, while the padding tokens are ignored as before. If these many training arguments seem overwhelming, that's because they are. Sorry for my bluntness, but this is the place that I have to shamelessly ask you to refer to my previous tutorial because I have done a very long section explaining these and many more training arguments in more detail and I really don't feel like repeating them here but these are the additional ones. One is this learning rate scheduler that we are not keeping constant because in this case we can start with a larger rate and change it gradually to reach the minimum loss during the training process. This is used in conjunction with the warm-up ratio which starts from zero to the value of the learning rate and I'm using another variant of the Adam W optimizer. Finally, we pass all these goodies, these training arguments, the model, the training and evaluation data sets and the data collector to the trainer method and watch our GPU does the wonder. Even with these additional quantization steps, my training time was impressively fast considering the fact that my PC is not very really optimized and my GPU is a bit oldish. You can see all the metrics after the fine tuning is completed. The validation loss is a bit lower than the training loss simply because I applied regularization with the weight decay argument, which basically imposes a penalty to very large weights, so the model doesn't overfit the training data. The train model files should look something like these checkpointing files in the folder you specified as the output directory. So far everything looks fantastic, just one thing is left and that is to save this newly fine-tuned model and test it with another unseen question. After saving the fine-tuned model, you should be able to see these files in the folder you specified for saving the files, which include LoRa or adapter configuration files as well as the model tensors. We also need to set the PEFT configuration. All that is left is to reconfigure the model, this time with a new model and new tokenizer. Everything else is pretty much the same as the initial model specification and tokenization, except that we call the saved configuration on the base model and tokenizer, and then we create a PEFT model, which basically takes the base model configuration and the PEFT configuration. If you print the model again, this time you will see several more layers. That's because we applied the adapter method to each of those target modules and updated their weight matrices. I tested this fine-tuned model with several other unseen questions as well as questions from the dataset, and I can already see the answers have improved. The model is more consistent and gives more relevant answers. I know the whole process seemed an eternity, but you should try it at least once for the fun of it. Basically, I'm asking you to watch this video too. This one's for the fun of it. Basically, 